In this tutorial we're going to look at the machining techniques needed to produce um, a lithophane. Now a lithophane uh, is a really old idea, it goes back several hundred years and used to be made in ceramics and other translucent materials. Uh, and the idea is that you create um, different thicknesses of materials which will allow the light through differentially. Uh, and now in our case what we want to do is cut into a translucent material, not a transparent material, but translucent like Corian or a coloured acrylic, so that the thinner areas of the material will let more light through and thus be lighter, and the darker uh, areas uh, will be thicker, and so um, you won't let as much light through. So what we do is we can take a photograph uh, like the one on the left here and create what is quite an odd looking 3D model when you view it uh, conventionally because um, we've converted effectively dark areas here to be high areas or uncut areas and the lightest areas to be quite deeply cut areas on our model. But the result of this is, in a translucent material, if we now backlight this or even simply hold it up to normal daylight, uh, you will see the photograph appear in the material because it will allow the light through to exactly match the original photograph used to cut the model. And these are extremely durable and uh, the process um, is really impressive for, for people when they see it, uh, especially for the first time. Okay, so that's what a lithophane is, and the rest of this tutorial we're going to go through the process of creating the toolpaths needed to create one. Okay, so now we're going to actually go through the process of creating a lithophane uh, from first principles. I'm going to start by creating a, a new file, and I'm going to make this uh, job uh, 8 inches by 10 inches, so it's going to be a small sort of portrait size, and we're going to assume the material thickness is a quarter of an inch, uh, and I'm imagining this will be something like a piece of translucent Corian. Um, for the appearance of it, I'm going to use a, a solid colour here, so I've selected solid colour and uh, a light grey, um, just because Essentially what we're interested in here is the pattern of, of light and dark, and so um, not having a patterned material is actually going to be uh, more useful to us. Okay, so other than that I'll just accept the settings, and that gives us our basic working area. The next thing we want to do is bring in the photograph that we're going to use as the basis of our lithophane, and we want to bring in that photograph as a 3D component. So I'm going to go to the modeling tab now. You can just use the tab um, down here explicitly or if you double click anywhere on the drawing tab it's quite a convenient way to swap to the modeling tab and vice versa if you double click here would go back to drawing. Uh, so on the modeling tab now I'm going to bring in the um, photograph. The tool I use for that is actually create a component from a selected bitmap. Now if I had a bitmap already open in my model and I selected it and used this tool, it would convert the bitmap that was already loaded uh, across into a 3D component. I don't have any bitmaps here, and certainly not one selected, um, so instead the tool is clever enough to know that I'm probably going to want to import something. So if I select this button with no selected bitmap, uh, it will immediately go to the file open and ask me to locate a, a bitmap instead on disk. And here I have one of Charlie Chaplin, so I'm going to open that file. Uh, the bitmap comes in uh, and is already been converted to a component and you can see here we have a component now uh, with the same name as the original image. This is the preferable way to bring in um, a uh, an image because we can get slightly better Z resolution if we do it directly like this rather than first importing the um, image as a drawing bitmap and then converting it. So if, you're, if you know you're going to use your image as a 3D model um, directly then this is uh, this is the way to do it. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to center this on the uh, model area here, and I'm going to use the F9 key for that, uh, which automatically centers it up. Now I'm going to go uh, across here and set the object size. So I select that, and I'm just going to make it um, six and a half inches across. Because I have the link X and Y, it will automatically keep everything in proportion, and it's made it slightly taller than eight inches when I apply that. OK, so that's my, my component. I can see it in the 3D view as well. If we close this down and we tile our views, we can see the two next to each other. And you can see that um, what it's done by default is to um, make areas that are light 
higher in the 3D model and areas that are dark, like his moustache here, uh, to be zero, to be the lowest point. Now for our lithophane, this is actually the reverse of what we need. We actually need to leave more material on where we want things to be dark so that the light does not come through the material and we need to remove the most material from the areas which are light in the image. Uh, now there's a very simple way of doing this uh, with uh, our component which is simply to um, make it subtract rather than add. You can see here the combine mode is add. So what I'm going to do, I can either I can change this combine mode in a variety of ways but I'm going to use the properties here so we can see everything more clearly. Select the properties and we can see now we have a combined mode of add. So I'm going to make that subtract. And also at this point I want to check how high this object is because really for the purposes of a lithophane we want it to be a relatively um, limited Z height shape. Uh, in fact 0.1 of an inch is about right. So we're 0.15 here. That, that's actually not too bad. Uh, but do check this and make sure that it's a reasonable value. Okay, so now everything looks a bit odd in the 2D preview because we've effectively got a negative, but we can see that our 3D object is now the right way round. So areas that were dark, like his hair and his moustache, are now going to be left um, standing proud, uncut, and will therefore not let any light through and appear black uh, in the lithophane. Okay, so the final step now just to uh, to finish preparing the job is to, to draw a boundary. And I'm going to go back to the drawing tab for that. And if you remember, I can use the tab down here, but I can also just double click, which is quite convenient to swap between modeling and drawing. And I'm going to select the rectangle here. And I'm going to start drawing my rectangle, but actually I'm going to make it a very precise um, size. I'm going to make it exactly 8 inches tall. And I'm going to make it... Um, six inches across. Apply that and then again just as I did with the lithophane itself, uh, the image, I'm going to press F9 with the rectangle selected and that will center my rectangle. So now I have uh, everything centered up. I've got the, the um, component that we're going to actually use to create the 3D toolpath and also a vector boundary to limit the area that we're going to cut to a nice size. And The reason that you're typically going to want to do that is that the image that you've located from the internet or uh, wherever the source of your image is uh, will probably not be exactly the right uh, aspect ratio or size that you're, you're intending to cut. So the boundary makes that um, straightforward to correct. OK, so we have our model now complete. The next step is to prepare the toolpaths we're going to use to cut this model out. And we're going to use uh, two toolpath types, um, a roughing and a finishing toolpath. And so everything we do from now on really is going to be focused on the toolpath tab. Uh, and it's a convenient uh, aspect of the software that you can use this button to switch your focus once you finish doing your design work uh, quickly and easily to the toolpath tab. And what that's done is simply hide temporarily your drawing and modeling tabs on the left here, which you can still access but they're, they're hidden away and it's opened up and pinned the toolpath tab out for you so that you can have easy access to it. Now before we go any further, before we create the toolpaths, we can see up here a quick summary of our material setup, which is looking pretty good. Uh, these all seem reasonable values. Our material thickness is 0.25, quarter of an inch thick material. Uh, our origin is going to be on the top of the material, that's where we're going to set the Z0 uh, zero for the machine. And we have um, our uh, material clearance and plunge here of 0.1 of an inch. But I'm just going to open the material. It's always a good practice just to open this material setup before we go any further, just to, to make sure everything's fine. Uh, now, one of the unusual aspects for a lithophane compared to most of the 3D models, so generally when you cut a 3D model, you're probably going to, from the top, you're probably wanting to just cut it into the, the top surface of the material. Now, unusually for lithophane, what's really important for us is the thickness of material really from the back because it's going to be backlit. And what we want to do is make sure that we cut our lithophane such that um, it's thin enough in the areas we need it to be to allow the light to shine through strongly. So, in this case, we're going to use the model position in material options to do that. Um, if you remember, our component was about 0.14 of an inch thick and that's represented in our two and a quarter inch block here by this light shaded area and as I slide this around you can see us move our model our 0.14 um, inch model in the material and crucially what we want to do is push it towards the back here so that when we cut this shape crucially this area is thin uh, thin enough that we allow quite a lot of light through we can't make it too thin unfortunately because there's going to be some uh, potentially depending on your machine tool you might have uh, some issues there with the bed or um, 
the accuracy of that thickness. So I'm going to allow 0 0.04 here. Um, but really, you want to make that as thin as, as you can get away with still making leaving the, the uh, lithophane robust in the material and according to the tolerances on your machine. Uh, but this is the crucial thing. So we, we've, we've moved our model down. Um, I can just quickly now move on and check the other things. We've got uh, rapid and clearance. So the clearance is the uh, height above which we will uh, move um, uh, around over our job and the plunge depth is the point at which we will uh, begin to uh, use our slower punch rate. Uh, in both cases that's 0.1 of an inch, that's fine and I've set my um, home Z position to 1 inch that means that we will ultimately retract back to uh, 1 inch above the um, Z0 position at the end of the toolpath. Okay those material setup uh, uh, values look fine so I'll okay that. Now the next thing for me is to create the roughing toolpath and the significant thing that you must do before going in here really is to make sure that we have um, the boundary selected that we want to use because um, we are going to only machine inside this rectangle we defined earlier on. So with that selected I can now open the roughing machine toolpath strategy and we see the form here which is um, hopefully fairly familiar to you. I'm going to use an eighth inch ball nose, which is quite a small tool, um, but uh, as we'll see later, it's quite convenient uh, if you don't have a tool changer on your machine to use a, a, a single tool, if you can, for both of these toolpaths so that you can output them as a single final toolpath to send to your machine, uh, which will get so that they'll be appended and run uh, as a single item. Okay, so I'm just selecting the basic quarter inch, uh, eighth of an inch uh, ball nose out of my tool database. Uh, but because this is for roughing, um, I can afford to loosen some of these values up a bit. Um, we're going to rough really to bulk out the material. It's not going to affect the surface finish. And in fact, I'm going to allow, an, I've left here and here an allowance uh, of 20 thou anyway over the surface to make sure that we only cut the final surface with the second finishing toolpath. Um, so what I want to do is just for the purposes of this toolpath only, I'm going to edit the properties of the tool that I've selected. So I've brought in the sort of default from my tool database, but now I'm going to make some just local modifications to it just for the purposes of this toolpath. Uh, in particular, I'm just going to increase the pass depth there. Um, that will ensure we do the whole thing in just two passes. And uh, I'm also going to dramatically increase the step over because I really don't care about uh, cusps uh, or the finished uh, result of this um, toolpath on the surface. We just want to bulk the material out. The feeds and speeds, you just must ensure that they're appropriate for your machine tool and the material you're cutting. OK, so with those values set, we've got the allowance put on to allow some uh, leeway for the finishing toolpath to cut into. And I'm going to use the Z-level roughing strategy here. Uh, and we're simply going to raster it. Uh, we don't want to offset ourselves in from the boundary, that's fine. So with those selected, I'm just going to simply click Calculate. And we can see now that we've created the basic toolpath. And um, if we preview this uh, toolpath, so we can just preview the selected toolpath here, um, we'll see that it's taking two passes. First pass just finished there, now coming for the second pass. Uh, and it's bulking out quite a bit of the material. So we're only going to come back now and finish off the smaller areas with our final pass. OK, so that's looking quite good. Close that. The um, simulation disappears for the moment. And we can look again at the model and go for our 3D finishing toolpath. So previously we roughed, and now we're going to finish. Uh, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select uh, the same uh, tool again, the 8th inch ball nose from my tool database. I'll click edit just to uh, demonstrate the point. But um, in this case I want to leave all the defaults as they are because um, we are going to go for a 10% step over, a much finer step over this time and essentially use this tool as the database uh, version is intended as a finishing tool. Um, I'm going to raster my uh, area. Uh, but what I want to do is raster at an angle. And the reason is simply that you do you get a nicer effect essentially you if you don't uh if you especially if you've got sort of vertical or horizontal parts in your image uh if we don't uh raster along them. So we're going to raster at, at 45 degrees. Now if I was to put in just 45 degrees here, uh what we would find is that we would be rastering from this bottom right hand corner. Um, so in fact the angle that you put in will determine which corner that you start from. Uh, so in our case, uh, what we're actually going to do, we're going to put in 315, which is 45 degrees less than 360. 
which is actually takes us all the way around to, to start rastering in this corner. So 315 will actually be a 45 degree strategy but starting in the bottom left hand corner. Okay, we don't want to use an offset again, uh, so I'm simply going to click uh, Calculate. And again, we're calculating inside the selected area only. And with this uh, toolpath calculated, it becomes selected and we're automatically taken to view our um, simulation here, our preview block. So I can just preview again the selected toolpath and we can see the simulation uh, coming in here of the finishing toolpath taking off that 20 thousandths that we left on and essentially finishing off the job but because we've roughed out lots of the material hopefully we will reduce the tool wear and tear quite considerably there okay and that is the essentially the the main toolpathing process complete now before we go ahead and output these toolpaths uh, I want to show you a technique for validating the quality of the lithophane that you're likely to get from these toolpaths. Um, unfortunately, as we've discussed really, because the lithophane's quality is dependent on the light that it lets through, it's really difficult to see directly from the 3D preview what the actual lithophane quality will be like. Uh, but there is a really handy technique for doing exactly that. So I'm going to close the uh, preview now, uh, uh, but bear in mind the preview is still is still there and I'm going to just go back to the um, drawing tab and in the modeling tab here we can see that we've got our component that we use to cut. So I'm just going to switch that off for a second and instead I'm going to go to the uh, model menu item and you can see we can create a component from the toolpath preview. So the the preview is still um, as it was just as we left it there and if I click this button it gets converted for us into a 3D component. Um, so effectively now what we're seeing is the simulation block as a 3D component. Uh, now to view this um, as it will look uh, in terms of the lithophane, we need to do the reverse process of the creation step, which is to essentially invert it again. I'm going to invert this a slightly different way than we did before, same principle, but I'm going to use the right click menu directly from the item in the component tree. Again, we could just go back through the um, component properties as we did before, but I'll just show you a different route. And when we subtract that, we get uh, in the 2D view here a grayscale representation of the inverted model. And what's really useful about that is that we can see very clearly um, how blurred the result is from our tool. Okay, so you can see I'm sure straight away that the image is quite blurred and the reason it's blurred is because we've used a relatively large tool to cut the final result. So we are seeing effectively the radius of the tool generating a blur over the whole image because it can't cut the fine detail. And so this is a really useful way of verifying to yourself that you've cut with a tool that's appropriate to achieve the result you're after. Okay, so we're going to keep this preview um, handy and what I'm going to do is just rename it now to call this um, the eighth inch. Okay, so we're going to go call this 0 0.125 finish. Uh, but I'm going to hide it. Okay, switch back on our original model that we're going to cut again. Okay, and I'm going to just select this and go back now to our toolpath tab. And what I want to do is try a finer tool on the finishing path to see if we can improve the result to a more satisfactory level. So I'm going to select the 3D finishing uh, toolpath we created previously and I can duplicate that. We can either use the duplicate button up here to copy it or I can simply duplicate it from the right hand menu. So that's created a copy of that toolpath for us. Now I can double click it to edit it and in here we've got all the settings we had previously. Uh, but what I want to do this time is make a, a 16th inch ball nose and see what that will look like. So I'm simply going to edit our previous toolpath and make that a 16th. Make sure I edit the name as well as the um, diameter so we don't confuse ourselves. 10% step over is applied automatically, so this is a much finer step over. It's going to take a lot longer to machine, uh, but again, it might produce a surface finish which is worth the extra weight. So um, I'm just doing exactly the same calculation step we did previously. And this will take us to the simulation. Now I've got simulations of the previous toolpaths uh, already done. We don't want to use those anymore. So before I simulate my new toolpath, I'm going to reset the preview. And then just with this finishing toolpath selected, I'm going to 
simulate the result. OK, and we can already probably see, you may already see, that some of his waistcoat detail has been much, much more finely detailed um, uh, pattern here has been picked up by the, the smaller tool. OK, so we can do the same thing we did previously. So um, our simulation is still there. Even when I close this and it's hidden, it's still there because we've uh, not changed it. And I can cut back to my modeling and drawing tab, uh, go to the model menu item and create another component from the preview. Turn off our original one. Do the same process we did before, make it subtract so that we can see it as we would uh, expect the lithophane to look. Now I'm going to select this item and zoom in a little bit so we can see the face. You can maybe already see that we've captured a lot more detail there. Uh, if I switch this one off and switch on the previous one for comparison, hopefully you can see, in particular if you focus on his mouth and his eyes here, you'll see um, that these are considerably more blurred. So I'll switch it back to our 16th, so you can see the detail we picked up here is, is much better. OK, of course, the downside of what we've done here, if we switch on our um, summary, uh, we can see that, of course, we've now got a five-minute finishing toolpath instead of a two-minute finishing toolpath. So really, it's a question for you now as to uh, whether you want to justify the extra time for the smaller tool. But it's a really handy technique that for um, reviewing your the actual lithophane look and feel from the um, simulation which is difficult to interpret um, directly. OK, so that's really um, all there is to lithophane machining. Uh, obviously, the final step here would be to save our toolpaths out. Uh, if we were to use the, the tools which have the same tool geometry, so these were both um, using the uh, eighth inch, if you recall, um, we can verify that, by the way, uh, by just rolling over them. They give us a summary if you um, hover over the toolpaths and you can take a look at the details in the list. That's very handy. Um, and we can see here that both of our toolpaths are a quarter of an inch. So we could save those out as a single file, um, even on a machine with no tool changer. Obviously, if you wanted to use your 16th, you would probably need to save these out uh, separately as a uh, independent toolpath files uh, because you'll need to swap the tool between them. Um, and that's uh, the basics of lithophanes.